Deputy Owen Murphy, the Deputy is five minutes. <coughs> Thank you, Chair. Chair, I wanted to address one particular aspect of the bill that's before us, and that relates to the Fiscal Advisory Council, putting it on statutory footing. And also, as that pertains then to the discussion on the budget that we are beginning at the moment as we lead into December. Putting the Fiscal Advisory Council on statutory footing is very welcome. Uh, we made a commitment to the people during the election that we will put transparent and responsible budgeting and financial management at the core of government business. And almost the moment after we were elected into government with our coalition partners in Labour, we went about setting up the Fiscal Advisory Council. It's an innovative idea. It was something that had begun in the UK. We took it over here. And it's important now that with this bill, we then bring it into the framework of the discussions that we are going to have. Um, it footer, the bill further strengthens that body and the footing that it has in terms of the debate that we're engaged in. And that is a welcome thing. And I congratulate the government for its foresight and for moving so quickly to do that. It's an independent body established to guide government thinking on preparing the budget. We are not bound by its reports or by its recommendations, but they should guide us because otherwise it only serves as window dressing, as an image of reform rather than true reform itself. If we do not take their recommendations on board in some extent, even if it's just to debate them and to dismiss them or to take parts of them or to consider them further. But it must be part of the discussion that we're all having here in the chamber about the budget that comes because that's how we set up the body. And if we don't listen to it, we risk it becoming irrelevant. Um, now, last year, the Fiscal Advisory Council called for a greater budgetary correction than was being anticipated. To cut more and to be careful of our assumptions for growth for 2012, and I, I agree with this prognosis at the time. Now, we didn't go with the recommendations from the Fiscal Advisory Council, but we still did okay, and there was still a growth in the economy in 2012. It wasn't as high as we thought it would be, but there was still growth, and I think that's an important point to keep on making. The economy grew this year. It is growing this year. We came out of recession technically at the beginning of the year. That's a positive thing. It's a welcome thing. It's part of the confidence aspect that we need to get back into the economy, try and release the about 100 billion of private Irish household wealth that's on deposit with banks. It's losing money on deposit with banks. We want to release that back into the domestic economy. And knowing the economy is growing, the, the domestic economy, even if it is bouncing along the bottom, as the RSI has said, it is still growing. And that's a positive thing. And we should repeat it as often as we can because it will be of the benefit of the domestic economy, the businesses, and hopefully in creating employment down the line. Now, the latest report from the Fiscal Advisory Council, that of September 2012, is essential reading, I think, for every deputy in this House as we approach the process that is now underway. And I would like to draw on three elements of it. The first element uh, is the opinion of the Fiscal Advisory Council that the correction for the budget that we are about to agree for 2013 should be greater than 3.5 billion. I support that. They're saying cut bigger and cut faster. Deputy Dunner, who's sitting in front of me here, said before that the, the national deficit is a national security issue. And on that point, I absolutely agree with them. The longer that we have a deficit in place of the size that it is, we remain too exposed to external events. We are not in control of our own decisions here in this country. We do not control our own economic destiny. We need to get that control back. And cutting the deficit is key to that. And that's why I support what the Fiscal Advisory Council is saying when it says cut more and cut quicker. We cannot rest upon the assumptions of growth for next year. Yes, I believe the economy will grow, but we have to be careful about how much we think that it will grow by. And we cannot continue with a prolonged adjustment because ultimately I think we risk undermining the great strides that have already been made by this government in correcting our financial position. So cut more and cut quicker, and I agree with that point of view. The second point from the Fiscal Advisory Council's report of September that I wanted to draw upon was this. The idea that in responsible budgeting you must keep all options on the table, whether that be tax increases, social protection, or looking at pension uh, and pay in the public sector. At least put them on the table, at least include them in the conversation so we can see what the options are that are facing all of us. We can see what the opportunity cost is of having a policy in place. Now, that doesn't mean you might not do anything about it, but at least let's have that discussion so we can see the figures and we see that what, 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 what's facing us. Nothing should be off the table, and I don't think that it's a dangerous idea to have all options open and to discuss them in full and then dismiss them if you want to, but at least have the debate. I know the Programme for Government commits us to a certain fundamental agreement, but that document must be a fluid thing. We must be able to challenge it from time to time. As events change, the document has to be allowed to change with it. We must challenge the assumptions in it all the time. That's our responsibility here. We cannot just simply rest on an agreement that was agreed at a point in time. We must continually go back and look at it again, revise it again, does it still hold true given what has transpired since then, whether it be in Europe or our domestic economy? Please look at it. Thank you, Chair. The third element I wanted to draw upon from the Fiscal Advisory Council report is in relation to, uh, I suppose, a warning that they issued in their latest report in September, and that was to be careful of groupthink. Groupthink in our assumptions about the economy and the levers that we're using to try and correct our fiscal position as we look to 2013. The use of that word to set off alarm bells in the corridor of power, because whenever we talk about what happened in the boom and the bust, Often the most common excuse given or the reason given as to why we couldn't see what was happening was that groupthink was in place. No one saw it coming. Well, some people did, and unfortunately they weren't listened to. 
So when the Fiscal Advisory Council says to us, cut quicker, when the central bank says, be careful of your assumptions for growth for next year, we must listen to that. And I'll conclude on this point, Chair, uh, and it's in relation to the new transparent, open budgetary process that the Programme for Government commits us to. It's something that we agreed to as a government when we came in that we would do this. We've made great strides in that area. We have a more transparent government than we've ever seen before, and that's a welcome thing. I think we can go further. I think we can do better. And as a new TD in this Dáil, I would always stand up and say that in the hope that we can do better and improve the Dáil for everyone here, because I am a TD, and I'm elected, and I have a responsibility for the budget, as do all of us in this chamber, to make sure that what we agree with what we are doing, and we can support it, and we can stand over it. And that if questions are to be asked, then we ask those questions, and we debate the answers. And that's what I think is an important role of the Dáil. I understand we're going to have a full debate on the budget soon, if not next week, the week after that. Some of the headline assumptions, some of the headline issues we're going to address. I'm looking forward to it. I hope everyone will contribute to that. I don't have the answers, but I do think we should be raising the questions. And I would urge the government, as a final point, Chair, to establish a budgetary committee. One that would be cross-party, that would look at all issues of the budgets in every department, meet with the Fiscal Advisory Council, meet with the, the Secretaries General of the Departments, challenge the assumptions, go through it in the course of the year. There's still a chance to start something for this year, and I think we should do it every year. Thank you, Chair.